Welcome everyone, Marcelo Mate Talk Time. Marcelo, I was going to do the, my uh, call out. Hey, Marcelo from Nishwari. No, it's Mate Talk Time. Welcome. Hope you have an awesome drink in front of you. Here's the tally from last week. Now, a lot of people didn't write in. I'm just, I'm just saying. So, uh, I'd love to see what you are drinking. Mate got two votes, baby. We're going to slowly convert to actually a beat coffee. And I think it's because people didn't write in. So, Tell me what you're drinking. Put it in brackets. Put an emoji. Uh, I'll, I'll get the gist of it. Um, we had, ooh, throwing water around. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you're doing. Have a look at this photo. This is Philippe from Slovenia. And Philippe actually got himself this swag looking mate gourd. Look at that bombija. That bombija is the, is the metal straw. My man, I don't know where you got that from, but that is super cool. And I, when I saw it, I was like envious in 10 seconds. I'm like, I want that. Excuse me. So for those who are new, welcome to Mate Talk. Mate Talk, very informal. It's all about, you tell me what you're interested in talking about. These happen every week. It's one continuous roll, no cuts. And so you're gonna get, um, I have to be very careful that I just keep myself, you know, focused. So I don't say anything that's gonna be stupid. Uh, yeah, I have the, so if you, if you like this style, awesome. If you like other styles like me, reviewing fragrances in a much more, I guess, beautiful lighting, all that sort of stuff, then I have uh, other content. One thing that, and actually, one thing that I, that I, so I was going to talk about the Paris one, we'll talk about that, that in a minute. So another thing that I love doing is actually interviewing the perfumers themselves. I mean, I'm all about understanding, unboxing, discovering, the art and creativity associated to niche perfumery. And in this case here, for those who may have missed, I had an opportunity to go to Italy to a small town called Salso Maggiore Terme. I interviewed Mel Fushuni. Now, some of you might not know Mel. Uh, he is a, a very, he's, he's a poet. So he would be the, I don't know what the equivalent of that in poetry itself, but he's a poet, but he actually expresses himself in perfume. So these are olfactory poems. Sounds like what? But trust me, I promise. Experience these. Go out, test out these fragrances, and understand. And you'll you'll see what I mean. These are more than just they. they you know, they have a citrus opening, or they smell fresh, or whatever it may be. These are. I mean, they're beautiful perfumes to wear. Don't get me wrong, but there's more to them. And so I went to Salsa Maggiore to spend time with me on an unbox. Now, let me give you a little bit of a backstory, and then let me show you a video and, uh, and uh, give you a bit of a highlight here. So uh, Sandra and I, my wife, we travel to Salso Maggiore Terme quite a ways. And so we, it's not only just uh, traveling from Australia to Italy, but it's also then going to the actual town where he is. We landed the night before, like in every travel situation, there are some misconnections and there's, so there's some you know, I guess stress when it comes to traveling. So we were a little bit fatigued and tired, but we got to Salsa Maggiore the next day, a little bit nervous. So I was nervous to meeting uh, Mel again. And, and I also wanted to make sure that the content we're gonna create is gonna be different to the last one. So I know as we start setting up, normally I like setting up with three to four crew members. It was just Sandra and I. So I was trying to rush through this, make sure that we set up quickly and also to make sure that, uh, that I wasn't wasting Mel's time. Uh, so we finished setting up and then this happened. Super. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Marcelo is my name. I'm actually oh, gonna get emotional then. <laughs> it's actually a pleasure to be here in uh, Mel Fushuni's. This is the temple. Yes. And I feel a, a huge honor to be with Mel and be able to talk about his fragrances. What am I getting emotional for? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> hang on. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Marcelo is my name. So it was, um, I had a friend of mine who said, when you opened that movie, because he saw the video that we, uh, that we did, he's like, your eyes were a bit weird. What, 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 what was that about? <laughs> That's what that was about. My editor, her name is Grace. She put uh, brought this together, and uh, she actually meant. She said to me, "Oh, you're a suki lala." In Australia, when someone's being a bit of a crybaby, we call them a suki lala. So yeah, I was being a bit of suki lala. It's the Latino blood in me. So I'm Argentinian born, hence why I drink mate. And so I think our emotions are a little bit on the surface, you know. Um, and so I, I think what it was, 
it was all that, you know, go, 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 bop, 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 and it wasn't until I settled down and I'm like, and I sort of put my, shoulder, my arm on Mel's shoulder, and I'm like, I'm in the temple. I'm, I'm, I'm back here again. Um, and I think that sort of grabbed the hold. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to compose myself and just go and like stop, just stop being silly boy uh, and just do this thing. So uh, anyway, if you've missed that conversation, have a look at that video. Uh, we talk about four of the fragrances that are important to Mel. Uh, each one of those fragrances are, is a chapter in his life. So it's more than just a fragrance that he thought, you know, it would be nice to have a patchouli fragrance. Um, so these, each one of them means something to him in his uh, personal evolution as a perfumer and, and, uh, and also his own personal story. Really cool. He's, a, he's an awesome man. Next video is coming out uh, this Sunday. So one thing that we did last time, which got a lot of uh, response, is understanding how different notes work in perfumery. And the one that's coming out on Sunday is that uh, Mel loves using vetiver as a, as a note. And we're talking about different vetivers from different regions, how they differ and how he uses them in his perfume. It's coming out on Sunday. Check that out. Awesome video. Now, I had a question raised on the, uh, vi that video that came through. Where to buy Mel Fischuti fragrances? Now, let me just qualify this. So this, uh, himself and his partner, Federica, they were a small business, all right? So it's not a big corporation, you know, they don't have thousands of employees, all that sort of stuff. It's basically, it's they, 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 um, look, I don't know their full operation, but I'm sure they're getting some help, but ultimately it really is the two of them working in this. So uh, he doesn't have distribution everywhere, and he doesn't want that either. So just a heads up, he doesn't want to be every department store. Uh, these are unique perfumes that people need to appreciate and he wants that, I guess, that level of care with his brand. However, people do want to find his fragrances. Now, I asked him the question, any distributors in the UK at this moment in time, the answer was well, he's working on it, so it looks like that they're going to be doing something there. But in the US, yes, they do have distributors. Have a look at this. This is the list that Mel sent me. If you look in the comments below, you'll see that there is a link to that. You can download this as a PDF. I've actually hyperlinked all the actual um, websites, so you can click on those and have a look to see whether they have stock or in, in those particular areas. Uh, some of them are online um, retailers and others are brick and mortar, so you can go in and actually test. I always recommend never blind buy, just put it on skin, test it, and see what they are. But anyway, you can, and this is directly from Mel himself, so you can now explore that further. Bada bing. All right, have a look at this. So this video was released on Sunday. Recently went to Paris with uh, Sandra, my wife, and we were doing a, a reconnaissance. We were um, all things to do with the France fragrance tour. So we were doing, you know, we were sort of finding out where to, you know, where things were just to make sure that everything goes super smooth for our September trip. And we created this video. Now the video has done really well. We've had a lot of great comments. And internally we thought, well, actually I thought, because the truth is, that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, which I'm really grateful for. So I love people saying, wow, awesome video, great work, Marcelo, but it's not me, I'm not doing this on my own. So yes, from a creative point of view, uh, a lot of ideas flush through my brain, but at the end of the day, it's useless if I don't have a team who can understand what I'm doing and, uh, and, and begin to execute it. So uh, have a look at this. And the setup is different. Camera one, camera two, camera three, go. Camera four, this will be camera four. Wave, ladies. Ladies, wave. <laughs> We've got additional people. And on camera five, I think it was, is my financier. <laughs> Along with... Who invited her? I did. I did. Along with our editor. My name's Hannah, and I'm the one that has to edit all of these videos for Marcelo. That's coming out on Friday. Look out for this behind the scene video that we did. Uh, we actually grabbed some portions of that uh, Paris video. So if you haven't seen it, check out the Paris video first so you can see what, uh, how this is. Uh, and that way you, there's no spoiler alerts. But, well, there, will be, there are spoiler alerts, so there's no spoilers when you, uh, if you watch this particular production. Um, boom, 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 that's it. I think that was all I wanted to say about that. I think going back to what I was saying at the start is, uh, it's not me alone working with this. Yes, from a creative point of view, a lot of ideas flushing through my brains but it's also this incredible team that I have around me uh, who also support me. Sandra, all the filming that she did when we were in Paris 
and Hannah, who is my editor here, who understands the, I guess, some of the, the direction that I give her. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, there's something that happens in that video, which is funny. And uh, Hannah does speak languages. Let me just say that, so she's, she's, very, she's very talented in that area. A few weeks ago, I did a mate talk. I'm moving on. So watch that video. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. You'll, you'll enjoy it as I self-promote. Um, <laughs> mate talk. So I did mate talk 60. And in mate talk 60, I mentioned that the great people from Naso Mato reached out to me and said, we've released a new fragrance called uh, Saro Naso. Oh, now I, my brain was like, are you sure it's not Naso Saro? No, it's Saro Naso. I'm pretty certain. Anyway, um, released a new fragrance and we'd like you to test it. So I, I smelt it live. So if you want to see my uh, response there, so without, I'd never smelled it before. I didn't read any comments other than watch a little bit of that promo video, which scared me. And I stopped it at about five to six seconds in. It was a little, I, and it, it was a little bit overtly sexy for me. Um, and I thought, well, you know, what is this? Uh, so I was scared smelling this fragrance, thinking it was going to be this leather, um, musky crutch kind of you know like sort of smell but if you watch that video you see that my first response is like oh my gosh this is really like whoa the good people from and you probably saw it from the thumbnail from Nasumato reached out to me and they said would you be okay if we sent you something I mean look at this face I'm not handsome but I'm definitely not stupid um, and so I said yeah sure send me something that sounds wonderful so they um, they actually sent me Two things. One is feels like some samples in here or some testers, and this is something else. Now, I was gonna I've been busting to open this. You have no idea, but I thought I'm gonna open it live on Mate Talk. I'm hoping that it is Saronaso um, because I've already I've just I've already ordered after that 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 tester. I actually wore it for the next two days after. Um, I think that fragrance is incredible. So I have ordered it for myself, but um, we'll see. Now, one thing as I, as I cut through, I don't have a fancy knife, guys. I'm sorry. I just got a very boring knife. I have, so I have been trying to, <laughs> with the, like, shine a light and see if I can see through the packaging. So I have no idea what's in here. Now, let me say this, if in the end, because I've got the full Nasomato range, except Nudiflorum. So just so you know, Nudiflorum is the only one I don't have, only because it's pretty punchy. I haven't quite converted over to it. I always want to speak from my heart, and so I don't have it yet. So I will revisit that, I promise. Uh, but well, I have all the others, so it's all the others in the collection I have. So if this is not what I'm hoping it will be, which is uh, the Sato Naso, then I will gift this. I'm going to re-gift it, all right? So that'll be part of the, um, for those, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag, drag this out. For those, ooh, let me slowly reveal. Um, so those who are not members of the channel, check this out. This is how you can become a member. It's $4 uh, or four Aussie dollars. If you join, at the end of every month, I do a raffle, and in that raffle, I will include, if this is not Salamaso, okay, so if it's something that I already have, I, I will gift it, I will, I will re-gift this away, but if it's Salamaso, I'm so sorry, it, um, I'm going to keep it, um, but I will, I'll see what's in here, and I'll, we'll do something there, all right, so here we go, you ready? Ooh. I just got shivers. Boom. I'm actually shaking, goodness me. Um, uh, the Nasomato team, um, people in marketing, uh, thank you. This is, this is, I'm going to open it now. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. A million thank yous. Um, I'll send a message to the team there. But this is, this is awesome. This is an incredible incredible fragrance as he drops it and breaks it i do love the packaging look at that it's very you know the thing is guys don't be don't be um the marketing on it that that promo video is not what the fragrance is it really this this is an incredible perfume i haven't put on any perfume today by the way and i did it on purpose because i was hoping that it would be this divine scent right here so i'm gonna crack this baby open right now and be bubble here we go Ugh. 
I'm so looking forward to uh, living with this fragrance and uh, experiencing it more. The first impressions, I mean, like I said, I wore it for two or three days when I got that little sample. And um, this is, uh, I've heard some people that they don't like it. I'm not so sure. But anyway, look, everyone has different tastes. I get it. Let me open this. I'll see what's in here. And this could be. This is crazy. So this is um, this is a sample. My gosh, this is pretty intense. So this is a sample, and it's in some kind of liquid. Whoa, this is funky. This is going to be somebody's. I'm going to give this as. So if you want to um, become a member of the channel, uh, hit the join button, and uh, I'll make sure that this is included. <laughs> this looks really weird. I, I think that's like a lube. <laughs> uh, you you got to look. Alessandro Galtieri, apart from being an incredible perfumer, the man is very clever in the way he markets his stuff. So anyway, here's uh, the Sardinosa sample. I will, I'll make sure to include that in the, the winner at the end of the month. Normally what I do is I ask people, what, what kind of fragrances do you like? And, um, and then I'll curate something specifically for that. So I'll still do that, but you'll also get this, boom. Welcome back. I am so sorry a million times. I'm sorry. I should have checked my audio before I commenced. Normally the, the, the systems are set and it, we just, yeah, it's, it's all done. So rookie, rookie. I, I suffered as I was editing. It was hurting my soul. I, twice I actually came to the camera like, no, I'm going I'm to reshoot this. I'm going to reshoot it. But because I had already opened that packaging and uh, that I didn't want to fake like, oh, look, you know, I already knew what was in there. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm really sorry that you had to suffer through that. Uh, but this part here, I, I'm go I am going to reshoot. And uh, it's, it's really talking about all the Orto Parisis and the classifications that I like using, which is new recruit, semi-pro, veteran, or five-star general. And I've uh, classified these in different areas. Now, let me just point out, if you are a new recruit, uh, that is, uh, normally I classify a new recruit as someone who comes directly across from designer fragrances into niche perfumery. I'm gonna say you're not ready yet. Sorry to tell you this. Uh, you need to have at least two or three niche perfumes under your belt before that I would recommend you come into Orto Parisi's. Two of the, the prevalent notes that are in all the Orto Parisi is an animalic musk and also oud. And it very, on varying degrees, it uses those particular notes. So they tend to be a lot more animalic in their profile. It's not for everybody. Uh, but if you want a fragrance that has a lot of punch, a lot of evolution, really divine, incredible fragrances, very artistic and very complex, then let me begin. First one that I would recommend to you as a new recruit is Brutus. I am a big fan of this fragrance. This one here gets, doesn't get as much love, I think. As a, um, as a masculine leaning fragrance, it, it, I think it's fantastic. There, I, I have heard that some women like to wear this too. It, to my nose, I feel that it has a lot more sort of a male leaning notes, meaning that it has some aromatics in there. And it does dry down a bit more woodier spread it earlier. There are some oud components coming through. It uses the patchouli note quite well. It's a speculation. Alessandro Galtieri doesn't reveal his notes, but the speculation is that there isn't a patchouli style of note in the dry down. I love the opening of this. It has this uh, citrus with some herbal. Um, it has, it's aromatic. It definitely is masculine leaning. It does last, on my skin, does last quite a while. It's not as pronounced as the others, and I'll, and I'll speak about that in a second. So when it comes to its push and its sillage and things like that, it's not as, as uh, prevalent as maybe some of the others. However, I feel that it does have great longevity. I always spray on skin, and by doing so, when my body heats up, the, bra the fragrance re-emerges and, and comes out again. So as a great opening into the Orto Parisi range, I would recommend to you Brutus. The other one that I would recommend to you is Sturcus. Now, Sturcus means feces in Latin. This is Alessandro at his best. So either, you know, you'd always like to push buttons. I mean, just look at the, the uh, Saronasso uh, promo video. And uh, in this case here, what he's saying is that this is a poop style fragrance, but it's not. It's actually, uh, I did a video on this and I called it the sweet smell of poop um, because really it's a sweet wood 
style fragrance. This is really impressive. My father always jokes when he comes up to me. He loved that video and he always comes up to me and he smells me and he says, do you have the sweet smell of poop on today? Um, so yeah, look, it's, it's just Alessandro trying to be cheeky basically, but um, as an, so it does have oud in the, in the fragrance, but if you're fam not familiar with oud, uh, you're brand new, start here, you'll find that this is very appealing and it also will begin to um, develop your nose as we m migrate deeper into the collection. Sturkis, amazing sweet smell of, of woody notes. So it's a glorious fragrance, not poop. The next one, and this is now the bridge from as a new crude into a semi-pro, and it's the fragrance of Seminalis. One of my party tricks with this particular fragrance is uh, I love to spray it on people. I'm like, have you smelled, are you familiar with, uh, with Seminalis? I'm like, I've never heard of it. So pop, pop, I spray them. And then they, some people go, wow, that's really nice. It's got a creamy sort of smell. It's, it's got a bit of a woody accent. Other people go, mm, I'm not so sure. It's kind of unusual, different. And then I say to them, do you know what Seminalis means? And they're like, no idea. And I say, it's, um, I mentioned to them that it's, it means semen in Latin. At that moment in time, they all start going, <laughs> did you spray a semen perfume on me? Um, so it, the short answer is no, it's not a semen perfume. The idea behind it, and again, Alessandro being Alessandro, the idea is that where is this particular fluid sort of present, uh, normally in lovemaking. And so the idea is that this is a fragrance that has an olfactory lure. It's about sensuality, it's about attracting a lover. Uh, the intent is that this particular fragrance will um, not necessarily is an aphrodisiac, but it definitely it's a very um, sensual, very, uh, it's to attract a lover. Let's, let's leave it at that. I do love, so does it smell like semen is the question. Um, I love this particular subscriber who's also a huge Alessandro Caltieri fanboy, Andras. Uh, he's actually, I've written, so I've done videos on all these things, by the way. So if you want to know much more detail and, um, uh, or in-depth detail, please have a look at the, the videos that I've created. Uh, so anyway, Andras has put some comments and he mentioned on this one here, uh, he said, I, I, I did wonder if it was Seminalis, uh, so did, whether it did smell like semen. And so I did some tests. Um, and according to his scientific observations, he says that on read the comment it's quite funny um that the short answer is no but after 30 or 40 minutes yes that it does smell like seven hours i responded with i you know thank you for putting your body on the line and for doing research in the name of science so andras i salute you again my friend uh as a fragrance that is very sensual um and is quite complex i would recommend to you seven hours fantastic date night fragrance and as I mentioned, from a new recruit into semi-pro, this is a great bridge across. Now, as a semi-pro, the first one I would recommend to you is Virade. So Virade is, I would say that if a designer of fragrance wants to grow up, become a man, it want to become Virade. So this is, uh, it has all those components that make uh, design of fragrances beautiful, which is, you know, aromatic and woody-like and all that sort of stuff. But this amplifies it to, I mean, this, it's, it's like it has hair on it, you know? So, you know, nice big 70s style, you know, masculine man uh, kind of uh, approach to it. It has the components of that beautiful woods and aromatics, but with those musky tones associated to it. Fantastic fragrance. Have a look at the video that I created on this. Big fan of Vida There. It's a great masculine leaning fragrance. Ladies, if there's any of you that are using this, I'd love to hear from you. The next one that I would recommend in that semi-pro is Bergamusk. This is um, one of the, this is one of my early ones that I jumped into. If you like citrus as a fragrance note, this is citrus on, again, sort of, you know, a muscular citrus. Sometimes I find that citrus fragrance, not sometimes. Citrus fragrances don't last long because the molecule is a lot smaller. Here, Alessandro has combined it with a lot of musk and different, and different animalic components to it. So that bergamot scent profile is amplified here. It never loses the citrus component, but it definitely does go into a musky place. 
as a long lasting fragrance, as a summer fragrance that when you sweat, this thing just explodes across everywhere. Burger Musk is your choice as a semi-pro. Moving across into now the veterans. So this one takes a little bit more understanding of different evolutions and also uh, and we're now going into deeper with with the oud note the first one that i'd love and this is actually my pick i i love wearing taroni this is one that i love to wear as my winter fragrance this is a, a stabilizing fragrance very woody but very smoky opens with an incredible campfire smokiness hard wood being um uh, being burnt it goes into woods it does settle into an oud style of notes but this is magic. There's a sweetness and on, on opening, I do find that there is like a chili note that comes through or a capsicum note or something of that nature. But just, just divine. This fragrance here, I had a friend of mine who is, I would classify him as a semi-pro. He did buy this blind bought it. Don't blind buy peoples. Uh, he blind bought it and he rang me and he was like, are you trying to poison me? What is this thing? I read, I saw your review and I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it. And I'm like, my brother, <laughs> not yet. Uh, so I, I did say to put it away, come back to it in eight months time, and you'll find that this baby here is magic. All right, so that's Taroni for the uh, veterans. The next one that I would recommend to you as a veteran is Bocanera, which means black mouth. And he's, Alessandro's talking about the black orifices of our body. You work out what, the, what he's talking about here. Um, now, Bocanera uses a very rich cacao note, now with a much deeper, uh, a lot more accented oud note. Uh, I have two beautiful, I actually have three, I was gonna say, I have, I have two granddaughters, but if my third granddaughter heard that, I'm in big trouble. Um, so I have three beautiful granddaughters. The two older ones are way into perfume. I mean, way into perfume. The, my oldest granddaughter does not like very pronounced notes. So when I wear Bocanera, she is like, get away from me. This is too intense. She doesn't, she doesn't like it at all. Uh, her sister, however, she, I actually spray on her more than words and she loves it. So she does love that oud note, believe it or not. She's like four years old. How's this for training them while they're young? Anyway, I, I, I sprayed this, we were talking about perfumes, I was showing them the fragrance and I sprayed this one and she goes, mm, I love this one. And then she went in for a big inhale and she's like, oh, but then she's like, no. So as she smells the air, the projection of it, fantastic. Up close, it is a bit pronounced, but Bocanera as a chocolate cacao with that oud note, over winter or cooler months, Bocanera for you awesome veterans, I'd recommend it. Now, the last two, these are for your five-star generals. I don't recommend, so everyone else, I don't recommend you come in just yet until you've graduated into those others. First one is Mega Mare. Every five-star general needs to have Mega Mare in their collection. This one here is just incredibly divine, complex, power when it comes to its sillage, complement, uh, getter, the, the sillage and the projection of this thing is a monster. It's so, so incredibly divine. But just like the ocean, so we have an area here in, in Victoria called the Great Ocean Road, and I did talk about it in my video, have a look at that. Now the Great Ocean Road, when you look at it, you think it's beautiful, the sun shines, the water, the surf, and it's like, oh man, it's so inviting. If you were to go into there, you will die, you will drown. So Mega Mare is similar in that, it's like it's so appealing. Opening notes, I mean, even now as I smell it, it's vibrant, it, it's almost, aqu it's aquatic, not almost, it's aquatic, some florals, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is just pure magic. Boom, you spray it, and you're like, oh my, yeah, yes, sunshine, beautiful. And all of a sudden, it turns, and you're like, whoa, whoa, what is that? <laughs> what just happened? It becomes this sea monster, algae, and musky and you know the, the the deeper part of the ocean so mega mare is one of those fragrances. i look the first time i i experienced this and i was deep into niche perfumery so i thought to myself yeah i'm ready for this i had to wash it off it's very intense now this is glorious as a compliment getter as i mentioned before this thing will fill a room will fill a warehouse people will smell this don't overspray two to three times is the max that i spray on this beast um, but it's one that is just pure magic. The last one, and I don't like, so the last one is Kuyom. I don't like heavy leather 
uh, fragrances that are almost on the point of being uh, like, like, a, like a diesel petroleum kind of smell to them. So this doesn't go into that. However, the leather is exceptionally pronounced, very strong, very potent, but it blends it. Look, for me, the wood seem to settle in more. Again, I believe that there is oud in here. Just glorious. I mean, this is a very robust, sexy, uh, confident leather fragrance. Not for everybody. So I have, I know that when I'm wearing this, my, my wife likes this from a distance. She comes up close, so she's like, what are you wearing? So this one here is one that, um, yeah. So if I'm in a, in, a, in a large area, so I wouldn't go out to a restaurant with, with Sandra, my wife, wearing this. But if I'm in an, in an outdoor area, then yeah, this baby here just projects beautifully, stays on my skin. I find interestingly though, even though it's such a powerhouse, I don't feel like it has as, so this will fill a warehouse. Whereas this one here, it has moderate CI. So it's it, oh, in projection. So it's, it's pretty confident, um, but it's not like a, like everybody will know you're wearing like this guy here. There it is everyone. Boom, I'm so glad I was able to reshoot this part here. And I, again, I am so sorry for the, the suffering that you are. If you made it through to this to, to the point where I started here, I thank you all and I do apologize again for the mess that I made of that. I didn't check the audio, what a rookie. Anyway, notice I don't even have my mat there because it's much deeper in the, in the evening now, but I wanted to reshoot, I had to reshoot. I just couldn't bear to watch that or listen to that anymore. Thanks everyone. See you guys all on the next Monday talk.